We're going to set up the temperature control lab in Simulink. So if you want to just start with some of the files that we'll use for the initial ones in Simulink, come to the uh, this website here or apmonitor.com slash heat.htm and then scroll up down to download files and this is going to be download starting temperature control lab files. Select that and save it somewhere like your desktop. Okay and some place that you can access it. Okay, the next thing is uh, go ahead and extract it. You can do, I already have that folder there, so let me delete that. Uh, make sure you do extract all and put that on your desktop or some other place that you can access it. I'm gonna delete the zip folder and we have our temperature control lab file right here. And if we come into Simulink, you'll see the Arduino lab. I'm just gonna start with this and then build up the PID controller from from this one. Okay, so the first thing that it'll do is it'll load the uh, the lab. There should be the firmware already installed on it, but if you don't have the firmware installed, uh, there here are some instructions that you can see right here for uh, you know finding your COM port. So for example, in Windows, you'd go to Device Manager and you'd look for your ports, and there you can see it's on COM3. And so what I would do in Simulink uh, for, for MATLAB is do Arduino COM3 and do UNO. Okay, the very first time you need to connect, you do that. Other times um, you're gonna be, you don't, you don't need to do this. Okay, and I'll just clear all to make sure that isn't uh, there by default. Okay, here's my uh, linear model, my nonlinear model, and then my temperature control lab. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, you know, you can leave these here if you want, just for simplicity. I'm going to go ahead and delete these and make this my new set point. Okay, and that's going to be uh, degrees Celsius. And let me go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more here. Okay, and full screen. Okay, so here's my set point, and I'm going to set up my, you know, just for my plot in here. Here's my temperature. Oops, there we go. Temperature. This is my uh, going to be my response, and I'm going to delete this and come in here to the library browser and look for PID. Okay, and then you can get, uh, you know, discrete or continuous uh, for derivative action. That's going to be important. I'm just gonna do a PI controller only, so we can use either one there. And then I need to get, uh, instead of just putting in the set point there, I need to have a summation. Okay, let's put in the sum and drop that in right here. And then it'll ask me for a list of signs. If I do a blank, it's followed by a plus, and then a minus, that will give me a blank plus minus. You can also select that my list of signs there, just put that in. Okay, uh, go ahead and connect this up. This is just gonna be a left click, left click, and left click, drag over. The other thing you need to do right here is do a right click, and then you'll bring that signal back, and there you complete the loop. And the other thing that I wanna do is look at the heater value. Okay, look at the heater as well as the requested set point. Okay, so I've got my heater and requested set point. If you want to just make these, uh, let me clean that up so they don't cross each other. And there we go. Uh, no. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, I'll put my set point there and then my heater value. I'll have that come in second just so they don't cross. Okay, so this is going to be really temperature and heater. Okay, uh, the next thing I need to do is put in some values for my proportional. I'll do, just go ahead and do 10, and then my integral, I'll do 10 divided by 50. You gotta go through those other parts of this lab to figure out how to come up with these values. And let's go to PID advanced as well. I'm gonna limit the output, my upper saturation limit. I'm gonna do 100, and my lower is going to be zero. You wanna select a anti windup method as well. Um, I'm just gonna leave that as default back calculation. Okay, the value of one. Now you could also select discrete time as well. Uh, this would be better because we're only updating the measurement every second. Um, and I'll go ahead and click apply. 
and it's going to switch it to a PID controller. You can see the upper and lower saturation limits there on the PID controller. Now it's just going to leave this speed up alone. This is just going to make it real time. So it slows down the simulate. So it's real time for us. And we're just going to have this in a loop trying to control the heater coming in uh, to maintain a certain temperature set point. So let's go ahead and just run it and see what it comes up with. If you want to do a file at this point, save as. Um, yeah, you could save it as something else in there. Uh, so for example, uh, PID. And I'll include a copy of the PID controller in there just so you can reference that if you need to. Okay, let's go ahead and start, uh, start this. And we'll go for 500, uh, 500 seconds. Okay, so you might have uh, this error come up about triggered subsystems. Uh, what you need to do on this one is just come into the Arduino, into this triggered subsystem, and just select this latch input by delaying outside signal. Okay, and I'll go ahead and click OK. And I'll make that there, uh, put that there by default for the download, so you may not have to uh, do that. Okay, let me go ahead and run it again. And here it goes. It's gonna, you can see the real time simulation here, the values. Um, and let's look at the temperature response. And this should be our set point, as well as you may need to click this to uh, resize it. And you can see the heater and the PV response. Okay, so that went to 100 on the heater. And you can see that it's going to start trending up right there. On Now it's going off for some reason. So let me go back and, and uh, just see if I can uh, look at this and, and fix it. Okay, it's kind of going off and on at regular intervals. So let me come back in here. I'm going to click stop. And maybe something with the discrete controller. I'm going to go back to a, a continuous time controller. And I'll click apply. Okay, and tuning method. Um, I don't think we want to do a tuning method. There's the main, okay, maybe it was trying to tune it or something, I'm not sure. Um, but let's go ahead and select this back down to 25 initially, and then we'll show some step responses there. Okay, when you turn on derivative, then it's going to be important to have a uh, maybe a discrete time controller so you avoid you know the kicks that happen when the PV changes all of a sudden. Okay, let's go back here. Okay, so you can see that uh, you know the heater's off, the temperature is above the set point, and then it's going to cool off. So I'm going to blow on this a little bit, just get it to cool off a little bit faster. Okay, if you want to get a copy of the Temperature Control Lab, you can. Um, there's a button at the bottom where you can purchase it. Okay, I'm going to change the um, set point here. Let me make this just a little bit smaller so I don't cover up my graph every time I do this. Okay, there's my plot. And I'll make this just a little bit bigger. And let me just change the set point here. I'll drag this back and forth. And uh, let's go up to a set point of 60. Uh, or we could come to, for example, 50. Let's just see this rise up and see how well it does. So there you can see the yellow, which is my, um, that's going to be my set point. And you can see my uh, proportional integral and derivative values are working right now to adjust the heater value. In this case, it's uh, you know in the blue. And uh, OK, so it's going to be coming up. There's my heater value that's coming up. Um, I'm not sure if this is the anti windup that's doing some funny things there. I don't normally expect it to do uh, what you saw in the blue value. Um, OK, uh, but you can, you know, the main thing is you can put in whatever you want there for your PID controller and then it will hopefully respond. I have my blue line, my heater going up, and you can see the orange, which is the actual temperature, that's starting to increase toward the set point. Okay, and then we wanna see it um, 
you know, get up to the uh, set point and, and uh, you know, hug that there. Um, try to maintain the certain set point on my, I want to get the yellow and the orange lines to match up. Okay, and there we go. We're getting it, um, the heater value is starting to drop a little bit as it starts getting closer. Uh, that's hopefully due to the proportional term that says, okay, we're close enough. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to drop. There's a little bit of a discrete jump that you can see there on the temperatures. It's not much, but there is a little bit of one. Um, and you can see that the heater is lowering now to try to get it matched up and, uh, follow that set point. So you can see it's, um, it's doing that now. It's trying to follow the set point and it'll hopefully level off a little bit, maybe a little bit of overshoot. Um, one of the things to, to do on this is, is try to quantify the performance that you get. And so you can look at overshoot ratio, decay ratio. Uh, there's some other things that you can look at to try to quantify your performance for your controller. Okay, now if I change the set point down again, let me go back down. Uh, let's go down to maybe 40. Okay, and you can see that the heater immediately responded and uh, it'll let it uh, decay down. So you can change the set point and then see the response there from your controller. Okay, so that's it for this uh, Simulink tutorial uh, for the Temperature Control Lab. Again, you can come here to the, uh, the website. Uh, this is the closed loop control. If you missed steps one and two, go back over those. A little bit of more information on the closed loop control with examples in Python as well.